As his name indicates, the Malamut is native to Alaska. Early Eskimos who called themselves Inui, meaning the people, were nomads who relied on dogs and sleds to transport themselves and their goods through their snowy barren land. Besides pulling sleds or carrying burdens themselves, the dogs help hunters seek out polar bears and other food sources. These dogs, which are the ancestors of Alaskan Malamus, belong to the Spitz family of dogs which includes Akitas, Chow Chow, Siberian Husky, and many more breeds. Based on studies of the canine genome, the Alaskan Malamut is one of the most ancient breeds in existence. The relationship between the dogs and the people was a close one, with the dogs being well fed and cared for, and babies suckling on dogs along with puppies, both instances that can be pointed to as a basis for the Malamut's love of people. Malamutes became important in 1896 during the Alaska Gold Rush, when miners paid sky-high prices for sleds and dog teams. A good dog alone could cost up to $500, and a sled and a small team could run as much as $1,500. While the Malamute was popular, this was a dangerous time for the breed because many people crossed the Malamutes with other bees to either increase their speed or their size. Fortunately, the Swiss genes were dominant, and the Malamutes quickly reverted. The Golden is one of the breeds created during the dog-loving Victorian era. The breeds in its background probably included a yellow retriever, the Tweed Water Spaniel, wavy and flat-coated retrievers, and a red setter. Golden Retrievers were first registered with the American Kennel Club in 1925 and were officially recognized as a breed in 1932. Since then, they've established themselves as versatile companions, hunting dogs and working dogs. Goldens are found doing search and rescue, animal assisted therapy, arson detection, drug detection and assistant work for people with disabilities. Their energy, enthusiasm and intelligence makes them well suited to learning and performing almost any task. Alaskan Malamutes are friendly and love people. This makes them a wonderful choice for the active family that's got a thief alarm and doesn't need a Malamute for his watchdog abilities. That's because he doesn't have any. He's moderately vocal and will howl along with sirens or talk to you with expressive woo-woos. For a spitz breed though, he's pretty quiet and doesn't typically become a barker. This dog is smart and curious, and he wants nothing more than to share his discoveries with his human family members. Discoveries like exactly how the sofa was put together, or what the interior of your car would look like without all that carpeting. The good news is that destructiveness in a Malamute is preventable and treatable. The cure is exercise and lots of it, no matter what the weather is or if you have the flu. Lots and lots of strenuous exercise, hiking, pulling sleds in winter and carts in summer, although don't let him become overheated, competitive weight pulling and formal obedience are all good outlets for his brain and his brawn. The Malamute is smart, learns quickly and loves you, but he's also strong-willed and independent. Before we continue, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button as it would mean a lot. Thanks. Ask anyone about the defining characteristic of the Golden Retriever and the answer you will always get is temperament. The hallmark of the Golden is his kind, gentle, eager to please nature. He craves affection and will seek it from strangers as well as his own family. Goldens are adaptable and people-oriented, and those characteristics are at the top of the list of reasons why people love them. Unfortunately, the breed's popularity has meant that careless or clueless people have begun churning out Goldens without any attempt to maintain their sweet, gentle disposition. Shyness and aggression can be problems, leading to fear-biting or unfriendliness towards people and other dogs. Proper Goldens love everyone, but that love for people will often translate into jumping as a form of greeting. Basic early obedience training is a must for these big, rambunctious dogs. Fortunately, Goldens are very easy to train and a small investment of time when the dog is young will pay off when he's fully grown. He will readily sit on command, walk on a leash without pulling, and come when cold. If not trained, socialize and exercise daily, the good-natured exuberance of Goldens, especially as adolescents and young adults, can be overwhelming and even frightening to small children despite the dog's best intentions to be friendly. Choose a Golden as a family dog only if you are prepared to supervise kids and the dog when they are together and make sure everyone plays nicely. It's normal for puppies to chase and bite and play, so you need to teach a golden pup how to act around kids as well as teach the kids how to play properly with the dog. Any dog, no matter how nice, can develop obnoxious levels of barking, digging, counter surfing, and other undesirable behaviors if he is bored, untrained, or unsupervised. Any dog can be a trial to live with during adolescence. 
Start training your puppy the day you bring him home. Even at 8 weeks old, he's capable of soaking up everything you can teach him. Don't wait until he's 6 months old to begin training or you will have a more headstrong dog to deal with. If possible, get him into puppy kindergarten class by the time he's 10 to 12 weeks old and socialize, socialize, socialize. However, be aware that many puppy training classes require certain vaccines like kennel cough to be up to date and many veterinarians recommend limited exposure to other dogs in public places until puppy vaccines, including rabies, distemper, and paravirus have been completed. In lieu of formal training, you can begin training your puppy at home and socializing him amongst family and friends until the puppy vaccines are completed. Talk to the breeder, describe exactly what you're looking for in the dog, and ask for assistance in selecting a puppy. Breeders see the puppies daily and can make uncannily accurate recommendations once they know something about your lifestyle and personality. All dogs have the potential to develop genetic health problems, just as all people have the potential to inherit a particular disease. Run and don't walk from any breeder who does not offer a health guarantee on puppies, who tells you that the breed is 100% healthy and has no known problems, or who tells you that her puppies are isolated from the main part of the household for health reasons. A reputable breeder will be honest and open about health problems in the breed and the incidents with which they occur in their lines. The Malamute is a fairly healthy dog, but he's at risk for some genetic diseases, including hip dysplasia. This is a particularly devastating condition for an active running dog like the Malamute. Make sure your breeder provides you with written documentation from the Orthopedic Foundation for Animals or the University of Pennsylvania, certifying that a puppy's parents are free of hip dysplasia. They can also suffer from inherited polyneuropathy, neuropathy, for which there is no screening test. This is a nervous system disorder that causes chronic lack of coordination and weakness in the dogs. The Alaskan Malamute Club of America participates in the Canine Health Information Center, a health database. Before any individual Malamute can be issued a CHIC number, breeders must submit hip evaluations from the OFA and eye test results from the Canine Eye Registry Foundation. The OFA certification of thyroid health is optional. Golden Retrievers look beautiful, but are they healthy? An individual golden certainly can be, but the breed as a whole can be affected by a number of health problems. At the top of the list of health concerns in this breed is cancer. Some veterinarians go so far as to call goldens cancer retrievers, and treatments for this disease can be emotionally and financially devastating. It's not known to what extent all these forms of cancer are genetic or exactly how they're transmitted from one generation to the next, but the sky-high rate of cancer in golden retrievers is suspected to be at least partially inherited. Goldens also suffer from a high incidence of the painful genetic hip deformity known as hip dysplasia, which develops when the head of the thigh bone doesn't fit properly onto the hip socket. Serious hip dysplasia can lead to crippling arthritis and requires costly surgical treatment. Golden Retrievers can also have genetic elbow deformities. Eyes are another problem area in this breed, so make sure that the parents have been examined by a board-certified veterinary ophthalmologist and certified by the Canine Eye Registry Foundation. Before individual Goldens can be included in the Canine Health Information Center CHIC, the Golden Retriever Club of America requires them to have hip and elbow evaluations from the Orthopedic Foundation for Animals or Pen Hip, an OFA cardiology exam, and an eye clearance from the Canine Eye Registry Foundation. You can search the OFA and CHIC website for yourself to see if a pup's parents are listed. Breeders must agree to have all test results, positive or negative, published in the CHIC database. A dog need not receive good or even passing scores on the evaluations to obtain a CHIC number, so CHIC registration alone is not proof of soundness or absence of disease, but all test results are posted on the CHIC website and can be accessed by anyone who wants to check the health of a puppy's parents. A good breeder will be able to discuss the prevalence of all health problems in her dog's lines, those with and without genetic screening tests, and how puppy buyers make an informed decision about health risks to their dog. Don't fall for a dishonest breeder's sales pitch. If the breeder tells you she doesn't need to do those tests because she's never had any problem in her lines, her dogs have been vet checked, or any of the other excuses bad breeders have for skimping on the genetic testing for their dogs, walk away immediately. Careful breeders screen the breeding dogs for genetic diseases and breed only the healthiest and best looking specimens. But sometimes mother nature has other ideas and a puppy develops one of those diseases despite good breeding practices. Advances in veterinary medicine means that in most cases the dogs can still live a good life. If you're getting a puppy, ask the breeder about the ages of the dogs in their lines and what they died of. 
Remember that after you've taken a new puppy into your home, you have the power to protect him from one of the most common health problems in dogs, obesity. Keeping your dog in an appropriate weight is one of the easiest ways to extend his life. Make the most of your preventive abilities to help ensure a healthier dog for life. The Alaskan Malamutes is a thick, coarse double coat. It's not especially high maintenance, as you can brush it a couple of times a week to remove dead hair and distribute skin oils, but it sheds year-round and more heavily on a seasonal basis. A Malamutes owner's best friend after his dog is his vacuum cleaner. Twice a year, Malamutes blow their coats. Picture mountains of hair drifting all over the house and attaching itself to every surface. The rest of the year, the shedding is much less, so much so that you might be able to get away with vacuuming only twice a day instead of every 4 hours. If you can put up with that, the Malamute is a pretty easy care dog. Bathe him every few months or whenever he's dirty. He doesn't need any special trimming to maintain his distinctive look. It takes some dedication to live with a golden retriever. The golden's profuse coat requires regular brushing and bathing to remove debris and mats. While all dogs shed, goldens do it with the same enthusiasm they bring to swimming and retrieving. You can keep it under control with daily brushing to remove the dead undercoat, but if shedding is a deal breaker at your house, this is not the breed for you. Like most retrievers, goldens love water. When your golden gets wet and he will, give him a thorough fresh water rinse to remove chlorine, salt, or lake muck from his fur, all of which can be drying or otherwise damaging to the coat. Keep his ears dry to prevent infections and use an ear cleaner recommended by your veterinarian after he goes swimming. The rest is basic care. Trim the nails as needed, usually once a month, and good dental hygiene is important. So brush the teeth frequently for good overall health and fresh breath. Check the ears weekly for dirt, redness, or a bad odor that can indicate an infection. If the ears look dirty, wipe them out with a cotton ball dampened with a gentle ear cleaner recommended by your veterinarian. It's best to introduce your dog to grooming at an early age so he will accept it gracefully. Alright guys. Which one do you think you'll get? Tell me down in the comments.